A white blur in the rearview mirror zigzagged up to us in the midst of summer traffic. It was a Volkswagen wagon, filled with five teenage boys baiting me to race. There was nothing but taillights up ahead. I waved, they returned a less friendly gesture and spurted stupidly ahead. But off the next ramp, with an empty country road stretching out straight as a rail, I gave in to temptation. The Nissan GTR is a time machine. Every time I floored it, my stomach lifted in opposition to the gravity of adulthood, and a small but rapturous part of me felt like those feral idiots in the VW. Unbound, unwithered, rocketing down a road where consequence only existed in the next second. The wagon boys and I weren't alone in our admiration. Two teams on bikes jumped the curb into the parking lot and started with the selfies, commenting, perhaps, on the broader grille with larger air intakes, the more sculpted hood, the Tennessee plates from Nissan's North American headquarters. The reality of GTR beyond video games. It wasn't just young people marveling at the rare appearance of a supercar on suburban streets. Sweet ride, man, said a man who had probably just come of legal driving age when the first GTR arrived in the US in 2008. The GTR has come of age in 2017 with its most significant update. The 565 horsepower sports coupe has a more pronounced lip and side sills to help with airflow, and the blocky rear is chunkier, more menacing. Godzilla, as it is known, is growing into its body. Why does Godzilla in the wild elicit such reverence? It's part newness, part Nissan. The uninitiated recognize its power but doubt the Nissan badge better known for crossovers. It starts at $109,990 and sells only about $1,000 annually, roughly a tenth of the Porsche 911 and all its iterations. GTR is rare. Young and special. Godzilla fans know that it is quick, sick quick, hitting 60 mph in 2.9 seconds, and it is fast, blazing fast attaining a top speed of 191 mph, according to car and driver. That quickness from the 3.8-liter twin-turbo V6 starts taking your breath away at the 2000 rpms range, but it keeps intensifying until hitting peak 467 pound-feet of torque between 3300 and 5800 rpms. Staying on the accelerator can cause fear, unfettered feral fear, every sense howling like the glorious engine noise, vibrating, screaming, swirling inside the cabin in your chest, it is awesome in every sense of the word. The long, thin paddle shifters are mounted to the steering column, but the six-speed dual-clutch automatic is quicker and smarter. It knows what you want so it is best just to steer. While the handcrafted engine remains relatively the same since the beginning, with a sign plate by the one engineer who worked on that specific engine, the engineers keep tweaking the GTR, so the 565 horsepower is 20 horsepower more than last year's model. The most significant appeal of the GTR is its versatility. Not like a hatchback versatile, more like driver style versatile. It is immensely accessible. The long wheelbase, low center, near-perfect weight distribution from the front-mounted engine are complemented with an all-wheel drive system that inspires confidence in less experienced drivers and tempts more experienced drivers to lose their, um, wagon. GTR is called Godzilla, by me anyway, for how massively and surprisingly its power can erupt yet for how docile and comfortably it can hold drivers on longer trips. It also comes roaring out of turns with better balance than any car we've driven. The most significant updates for 2017 are in Godzilla's living room. We drove back-to-back -back trips about 150 miles each to our neighbor state to the north, and had no fatigue or cramping as in other cars of this kind. Nissan says it beefed up the noise cancellation and dampened the harshness. We didn't notice any undue road noise or back braking suspension stiffness. 
It might seem inconsequential in this context, but we average 23 mpg on our road trips. There's a spaciousness in its roofline and cabin, not enough to fit anyone behind the driver in the 2 plus 2 layout, but good enough to get two kids around town. And that trunk. At 8.8 .8 cubic feet, it fit my daughter's hockey bag better than some hatchbacks. Two sets of clubs should be doable. The guy at the coffee drive through whistled and said, nice saddle back interior. Wow. Technically, the Rakuta tan seats with hand-stitched interior were semi-aniline leather, meaning the die maintained the texture of the surface, as part of the $4,000 premium interior package instead of plain Jane Ricardo racing seats. The center dash has slimmed down from 27 controls to just 11, centered by an 8-inch touchscreen that is easy to use. Nissan's insistence on buttons, dials and way too many of everything has turned us off in other models, and we hope the controller dial on the carbon fiber center console, which supplements the touchscreen so you can zoom in and out of a map by just turning the dial, for instance, will make its way to all Nissan products. There's a balance inside and out, on the track or around town, uncommon in a supercar such as this. This rare breed of car, which makes novice drivers feel confident and confident drivers push their limits, is worth a stranger selfie, the admiring nods, even perhaps an appreciative taunt from a wagon full of fools. Godzilla is that good the Holden Colorado has been confirmed for entry into the series, with backing from Holden and a first render of the potential design released. Currently under construction at Rothstone Racing in Queensland, the first Colorado Super Ute will be joined on track by Ford Rangers and Mitsubishi Tritons, while the Mazda BT-50, Toyota Hilux, and Isuzu D-Max have all been confirmed eligible. The Ute's performance will be limited to 254 kW-678 Nm, with a minimum weight of 1800 kg for parity. On the addition of the Colorado to the upcoming series, Supercars CEO James Warburton said it made sense for Holden to remain prevalent in the Australian motorsport scene. Holden has been such an integral part of Supercars' rich history, so it goes without saying that we are delighted to welcome it to the Super Utes ECB series, he says. The Holden Colorado is now officially homologated and will take on five different manufacturers in what is shaping up to be an outstanding series. With official testing having commenced last week and six models approved for racing, the Super Ute series will commence in 2018 with a very strong field and what will be great racing. Each homologated model will be able to fill up to six places on the 32-car grid, which means not every manufacturer will be able to enter their full six. General Manager of Brand, Media, and Sponsorship Emma Pimble is enthusiastic about the Colorado's entry to the series, so don't be surprised if you see six of them on track when the series kicks off in 2018. Super Utes is an exciting new racing series and supporting Australian motorsport has been an important part of Holden's heritage, so we are delighted to homologate Colorado for the series, she says. The Colorado is one six models that will be eligible and homologated for the new for 2018 series, which will see dual cab Utes, with a 340 horsepower limit and a minimum weight of 1800 kilograms, competing on the supercar support card. The first race-ready Colorado is currently being built by Rawstone Racing, and will be prepped with the CAMS-approved control roll cage, pedal box, ECU, gearbox and ratios, rear axle assembly with control diff and ratio, brakes, tires, wheels, springs and dampers. Super Utes is an exciting new racing series and supporting Australian motorsport has been an important part of Holden's heritage. So we are delighted to homologate Colorado for the series, GM Holden General Manager, Brand, Media and Sponsorship, Emma Pinball said. Colorado has been engineered to handle anything thrown at it by our customers, from inner city and suburban roads to rural highways, dirt roads, and off-road. 
The racetrack is no different and we are confident Colorado will carry on Holden's winning tradition. The Colorado joins the Mitsubishi Triton, which has already began testing, the Ford Ranger, the Mazda BT-50, the Toyota Hilux, and the Isuzu D-Max in the eligible model range. Holden has been such an integral part of supercars rich history, so it goes without saying that we are delighted to welcome it to the Super Youth ECB series, Supercars Chief Executive Officer James Warburton said. The Holden Colorado is now officially homologated and will take on five different manufacturers in what is shaping up to be an outstanding series. With official testing having commenced last week and six models approved for racing, the Super Youth Series will commence in 2018 with a very strong field and what will be great racing.